Visit SailRite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Seth Grant with SailRite, and in this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make this beautiful utility tote bag kit from SailRite. This kit comes with all the supplies you need to make this bag, and it comes with a plotted pattern which you could use to make more bags if you have more material. This kit is available in five different color iterations and is a great place to start your sewing journey. Small projects like these bags will help to hone in your sewing skills, giving you confidence for future projects. You can also order just the pattern if you want to use your own materials. This bag features eight outside pockets and two internal pockets. Let's get started and show you how to make this utility bag. In this first chapter, we're going to be cutting out our patterns. So we have the right side of the fabric face up on our table and we took the plotted pattern and put it face up as well, right on top. Cut off 7A, 7B, and number eight. And we'll just cut them right off because these are for the bottom piece, which is gonna be made out of wax canvas. And we'll just set these aside. We're gonna pin the pattern to our fabric and we'll pin all of the long pieces with two pins and the shorter pieces with one pin. So most of them will have two pins. These two, I just put one pin in them because there's no reason to add a second pin. So for the large panel, I'm only putting a pin on each end. You could pin these flaps as well, but I find that it's pretty easy to cut out, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So now that everything's pinned in place, we're just gonna cut around the perimeter of each one of these patterns, and then we'll show you what's next. So you can use this pattern multiple times. So once you've cut it out, if you save the patterns, you can actually make the entire bag over and over again using whatever materials you want. All of our panels are now cut out, and we're gonna take 2A and 2B, and 3B and 3A, and mark all the little dash lines at the bottom. So just pull up the edge of your pattern material, and give it a little mark down there. And these will be our fold lines for our pockets on the front of the bag. So this is our main body panel and you can see we have our little line up here with a little uh, line here signifying the center and we're going to pull it up a little bit and we're just going to mark across the top of where that is just like that and that's where we're going to put our tag later on. This is our pattern for our wax canvas. We just laid it out on the table. We're going to pin it and then we're going to cut it just like we did with our fabric. It's a little bit harder to pin because it's stiff. So I'm going to use two pins on all of these panels just because it makes it a little easier. And you got to like wrinkle it up a bit before you push the pin through. And just make sure it's lying flat and it's on your fabric and not off the edge. Once we get it all cut out, we'll uh, show you what's next. Now we have our DuraWax light, wax canvas cut out, and our Cordura 1000D denier. Coming up, we'll be sewing our leather tag onto the main body of our bag. Sew this custom leather tag onto your bag to tell the world you made it yourself. We'll take our Sailrite logo and we're gonna flip it over and put our quarter inch seamstick basting tape for canvas on the back. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. So we're going to take it with our basting tape on the back and we're going to center it at the top just on top of that line so you can't see it. Just like that. We want to make sure it's even on both sides so it doesn't look crooked when you sew it on. To sew this tag on we're going to reduce our stitch length down to about two to three millimeters and make sure our Worker Bee Power Pack is set to the slowest speed since everyone's going to see this stitch and it's important that it's really accurate. To sew this leather piece on, we're going to put our needle in the right position and we're going to position our leather right underneath the outside of the center presser foot and we'll lower it and we're going to sew very slowly around the perimeter. We get to the corner, we're going to bury our needle so it's coming up a little bit. Lift our foot, turn it, lower our foot, and we'll sew one stitch at a time around this, uh, this rounded area. 
very slowly. And we'll just repeat this process on the other side as well. And we won't do any reversing at the end since there's not gonna be a lot of uh, stress on this. I think I could do one more stitch here. Now we're back to the straightaway. We'll just tuck our fabric in here, pull it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be pretty. Lower our foot, sew down this edge and repeat the same process on the opposite uh, rounded area. Remember to take it slow because this is a, a stitch that everyone is going to see. So you want to make sure that you get it, get all your stitches positioned in the proper spot. One more stitch around this corner. That's where the needle's coming up a little bit. Turn, and then we're gonna sew one stitch into our, uh, the start. So we're on top of the start, and we're one stitch in. That's it. I'm going to use the thread burner and burn the end of this thread. Got to be careful because I don't want to touch my leather. I'll just burn it and then push it down so it mushrooms. There we go. In this chapter, we'll be pleating and hemming our pockets. So we're going to take the two smaller pockets that have the little marking that we marked earlier, and we're going to uh, sew the pleats into them. So this is 3A and 3B. So we're going to put our stitch length to about 5 millimeters put our, foot, our needle back in the center position, and then turn our worker bee up to about half speed. We're gonna take this inside hash mark and line it up to this outside mark. So they're gonna, it's gonna land directly on top, just like that. And we're gonna put it under the sewing machine and we're gonna sew about a quarter inch from the edge. This is just a tacking stitch, so it's not that important that it's exact as far as where you sew it. We'll be sewing a half inch up later, and there's also a pocket that comes all the way up here, so you'll never see it. On these small pockets, this inside hash mark will always come and land on top of the outside. So you want your pleats going outward. So just like that, the lines are right on top of each other. And we'll put it in the sewing machine and sew it down. Uh, This puts the stitch at a quarter inch away from the uh, edge of the fabric. And once we cut them, you'll be able to see that we have created a pleat in our front panel. And when we sew it on, we'll actually straighten it all out. So with it, we're going to take this outside mark that we marked earlier and we're going to put it directly on top of the inside mark for this larger panel. And this is only on these outside edges. The centers uh, go the opposite direction, but I'll show you that in a minute. So I'll flip this around, put it to there, and just do a tacking stitch just like we did with the rest of them. For this, for this ease inside marks, you're gonna to wanna to put this inside mark on top of the outside mark. And then we'll sew a tacking stitch there.
This is another outside mark. So the outside mark goes in towards the center. And then again, I'll make sure it's on top. We'll repeat this same process with the other large pocket. We won't show that. And once we cut all of our trailing threads, you're going to see that we have the form of two pleated pockets. And we'll sew some webbing on later that makes them more distinguished. So we're going to add a hem to the top of these pockets, a half inch hem. It could have been done before we sewed the pleats in, but it really doesn't make that big of a difference because it's, it's very easy. And you could measure this to determine exactly a half inch, but I'm just going to fold it over approximately a half inch. You won't be able to tell in the end anyway. So we have all of our pockets over here at the sewing machine and we're just going to line up the outside edge of the foot with the top of the pocket and sew a straight stitch down this edge. Doing some reversing, a little bit of reversing at the beginning and the end. We're going to sew over it so it's not a big deal if you forget to reverse, but I like to. Then we come down the end down here, we'll reverse a little bit. And then we're just gonna put our next pocket in there and continue to sew. And we'll sew, we'll sew all the way down all of them using this exact method. And then we'll cut them apart when we're finished. Coming up, we'll be sewing our pockets to the main body of the bag. So now we're gonna apply basting tape to the bottom and sides of these pockets. We're going to start with the two larger ones. Uh, you can do all of them at once, but they probably aren't going to stay stuck when you take it to the sewing machine, so I prefer to just do two at a time. So I'll put basting tape on all three edges, obviously not the, the top edge because it's hemmed, and that's where the opening for the pocket is. Peel off all the transfer paper. And then we're going to baste it so that the bottom of the pocket lines up with the corner of the small flaps. We're going to go straight across. So if you baste up first, it can give you a nice little starting point. And then you can actually baste the other end. And now we know that our pocket's perfectly aligned and we just have to baste the center down. And sometimes there's a little bit of extra fabric here but it's not enough to matter. You just gotta work it in there. Just create a few tiny wrinkles that are close to the pleats and you'll never see those because our wax canvas is gonna come up and be sewn about right here. There we go. And we'll repeat the process with the other big one on this side. It, it doesn't matter if this bottom is perfectly straight because as I said earlier, the wax canvas is gonna come up and cover this entire bottom. It's just important that you get it to lay relatively flat and you don't have any wrinkles that are like here to the outside of your pocket because those will show up when you sew in your pleated pocket. So I always push the, put the wrinkles like right next to where one of these inside pleats is so you won't see it. And this is another tacking stitch. So it's not super important that you get it perfectly accurately. So we're going to do it a quarter inch away. So we're lining the outside of our fabric up with the outside of this foot. And we're just going to sew all the way around the perimeter just like that. And I will do a little bit of reversing here at the top. You don't have to because you are going to sew it. So sew the bag together over there and that'll be your actual stretch, stitch that comes under stress. But I like to do it. So I'm stopping approximately a quarter inch from that edge. Lower the foot and continue to sew down these pockets. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, so if your foot comes off a little bit and you're uh, slightly outside of this line, you're okay. You just don't want it to go inside, because then you're in your half inch. Actually, 
and we're going to do the same thing for this pocket over here on the other side. So now we're working on the outside pockets, the smaller ones, and we're going to put basting tape all the way around the three sides, but we're only going to base the bottom of the pocket onto the main body. And I'll show you that in a second. And now we'll remove the basting tape or the transfer paper from the bottom edge, and we're going to baste it on right down here, even with the corners, just like we did the bigger pockets. And sometimes these can be a little bit smaller, a little bit big, depending on how you sewed your, were sewing your pleats. And I just make sure it's even on both sides because we're going to sew a tacking, uh, tacking stitch here. And then when you sew your tacking stitch here, there's going to be another stitch on the inside, so you'll never see it. We're going to take it over to the machine and do a tacking stitch here and here, and then we'll show you what's next. In this chapter, we'll be sewing our webbing straps. Now it's time to cut our webbing. So we have the uh, Sailrite Tempered Cutting Glass and the Cordless Hot Knife. We also sell a corded version, but I like this one much better. And we're going to cut our webbing to 35 inches. And we'll cut our second piece to 35 inches as well. Okay, so now we're going to mark these and we want to mark them 11 inches in from the outside edge. And this is, uh, we're going to put basting tape between these lines and then we'll do 11 inches from this outside edge as well. Then we'll take our basting tape and we'll apply it to one edge between those two lines. Peel off the transfer paper and we're going to baste it so the edges are perfectly flush. And we'll do the same thing with this one. Then we're going to take a pen and we're just going to put it through the end right where, uh, right where our basting tape stopped so that we know where to start sewing and where to stop sewing. And we'll keep the uh, end of it a little bit out so we don't hit it with our uh, foot. We're going to move our needle into the right position and then we're going to put our webbing in so that the edge is right up against the outside of the inside presser foot. We want to make sure that we start right on top of that pen. Okay, and then we're going to do some reversing here. There will be a little bit of stress on this, so we want to make sure that it doesn't come out. And we'll sew down the length and do some reversing at the end. And we'll repeat that step, same process with the other. Now we're going to take our basting tape and we're going to put, uh, put it down each side of this webbing. And we're going to do that to all four of the ends of the webbing. So we'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. If it comes off, <laughs> there we go. And we're going to base this down so that it lines up with the bottom of the pocket here. So this end should line up with the bottom of our larger pockets. We want to make sure it's straight. And then we'll make sure there's no twist in the webbing because we don't want an ugly twist in it. And we'll peel off this basting tape and do the exact same thing over here. Next, we're going to take our sewing gauge and we have it set to a, an inch and a half. And we're going to go from the top of the pocket up an inch and a half, and then we're going to put a pin in. And this is where we're going to sew to. But we don't want to put the pin all the way in because then our foot will run into it, so we'll just leave it like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so the needle's still in the right position, and we're going to line up the outside of the inside pressure foot with the outside of the webbing. And we're going to sew all the way around, up, and back down. We're going to do some reversing at the beginning and the end. And we do want to make sure that this part is going on straight because sometimes it seems to come unstuck just because there's a little bump there.
Okay. And so we'll bury our needle, lift our foot, rotate the fabric, lower the foot, sew straight across. Uh, we'll position this last stitch just so we can get it exactly the same distance using the reverse lever. Lower our foot and sew down to the end and do some reversing. So for this one, we're going to have to have most of the bag inside the arm of the sewing machine. So we're going to roll it up a little bit. Oh, well, first got to put it under. And then we'll roll it up. Just so we have a little bit easier time working with it. Okay, and same process. Line it up to that edge. Foot down. Do some reversing. Sew around it and do reversing at the end. This chapter will be sewing our inside pockets. Now we have uh, 6A and 6B and these are inside pockets and we're going to remove the patterning material and then we'll flip them over so that the inside is facing up and you can tell it's the inside because it has a urethane coating on it and the top side does not. And we're going to put basting tape on the top long edge and the bottom long edge of both pieces. Okay, and now we'll remove the uh, tra transfer paper, revealing the glue, and we're going to base it down approximately a half inch hem, base down approximately half inch hem. And we'll do the same thing on this side. But when we're, we are only going to sew one of these edges because the other one will be sewn down when we sew the pocket onto the, uh, onto the bag. So we'll move our needle back to the center position and line up the uh, outside of our pocket, the top of our pocket with the outside foot, which is approximately a quarter inch from the needle. And we'll just sew down this, doing a little bit of reversing at the beginning and the end. Put in our next piece, sew across, do some reversing, and sew down its length as well. So now we're back at the table and we have both of the back sides facing up and we're going to put basting tape around these three sides. We'll do the same thing with this panel. We'll move the transfer paper, revealing the glue on all three sides. And then we're going to baste it so that the unsewn side is right between those two corners, just like we did with the outside pocket, just like that. And we'll do the same thing with the other one on this side. Okay, now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew from the top corner down around the bottom and up to the top again. So we have the uh, needle in the center position still and we're going to line up the outside edge with the outside edge of the foot which is approximately a quarter inch from the needle and we'll do some reversing here at the top. Remember this just on these sides it's just a tacking stitch so it's not as big of a deal that you're accurate, but on this bottom, it is a visible stitch on the inside of the bag, so you do want to be more careful. So I'm going to position my stitch so that I can get a nice turn here. Lift the foot. I'm going to have to roll a little bit of the material up. It goes into the arm of the sewing machine. Lower my foot and sew down this bottom side. And I'm going to be a little bit more careful down here because, again, you, if you look inside the bag, you will be able to see the stitch. 
So we want it to be nice and straight. And as you can see, I'm not on my quarter inch anymore, but this side is just a tacking stitch, so that's okay. And we'll repeat this process with the pocket on the other side. Coming up, we're adding a wax canvas bottom to our bag. So we have the bag body here and we have 7A and 7B, which are both our wax, or two of our wax canvas pieces. And we'll remove the pins from those and just set those aside because we're gonna use them again in a second here. Uh, so we'll take the patterning material off, stack these two on top of one another and we'll try to keep get them centered in the center of this. And this is the outside of the bag, it's not the inside. So these go on the outside of the bag. And then we're gonna take the pins and we're gonna pin them down. This is a stiffener, so we, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered because we're going to actually take this second piece of wax canvas and it goes over the top and we'll sew around this. So this is what you'll see. This is just to stiffen the bottom of the bag. So now we're, gonna, we're at the sewing machine and we're going to sew around the perimeter of these and we're going to line up the outside of whatever wax canvas is the farthest out. They don't have to be perfectly even because again it's just a stiffener, which this is a quarter inch and we'll just sew around the perimeter of it. You will be able to see this stitch on the inside and I am going to do a tiny bit of reversing. But uh, as long as you're pretty square, it's not going to look bad at all. Okay, we're going to lift our foot, turn the corner, lower the foot, continue to sew. And once we get to the other, uh, other end, we'll do some reversing as well. I'm going to take this pin out because it's going to get in the way of my foot. Now this is the outside pocket, the one we put basting tape on and didn't peel it off. We're going to peel up the basting tape now. And we're going to baste it on so that it's even with this edge. And we're only going to sew two or three inches up this edge because we still have to put our zipper on in a later step. So we'll do the same thing over here on this side and with the pocket on the other side. And this is just a tacking stitch, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, being super picky. You won't see it on the outside, but you do want to stay within your quarter inch or so because you don't want it to show up when you sew your half inch. We'll do some reversing here at the top. And then we'll do the same thing over on this side. So this is number eight. We're going to remove our pens and our patterning material. And then we're going to take a, our clear acrylic ruler and put it on the ha put it a half inch from the uh, outside of the fabric and use our awl and score it. And we're going to use this as a fold line for a half inch hem. And we want this one to be accurate because when we put all the sides up, we want them all to match, match up evenly. So we're going to fold it right on those score lines we just did at a half inch. We're going to fold right there at our score lines all the way around the perimeter and we'll use our fingers to press it down and wax canvas folds beautifully so uh, if you score it it should fold right on your score mark so now we're going to pin this to our main body and we're going to so we want to line it up at each corner as evenly as possible it's not always perfect but it should be very close and then we're going to take pins and we're going to pin these two ed edges. So I'll put a pin in here. It's not, we don't like to pin in the middle because there's so many layers of wax canvas, so it's really hard to pin. And also, we're sewing around the perimeter, not in the center. So we want this part to be the most stable. So when, we're, when we take it to the machine, we want to make sure all these flat pockets sew in flat. So you'll notice it's even between the two, or between the uh, webbing. We don't want it to be like 
sewn over on top of the webbing or anything, but they generally stay in place once you're at this position because they're already sewn in. So we're going to start sewing right here in this corner this direction. So we can do some reversing here and then when we come around we can do some reversing at the end and it'll all be contained in our half inch seam when we sew the bo uh, bag together. Our uh, needle's in the center position and we're going to sew uh, with the outside of the inside foot up against the edge. And we'll do some reversing here. And nobody will see this stitch right here, but they are going to see all of the stitches across these pockets. So it's important that you're very accurate when you do those. So I'm going to position my stitch so that it's about right at the edge of the foot. Turn the corner, lower the foot. We're stuck on the pin. There we go. And sew across this pocket. And I'll make sure that the pocket since this one's a little loose, you want to make sure that this pocket lies flat. This one can actually wrinkle and look bad. I take this pin out. Again, we're at a location that's just a tacking area. So it's not as important, but I still try to keep it accurately. Oops. Hold the reverse lever to go back a little bit. I don't think I did that very well. Turn our corner. Lower our foot. Lift our foot, turn the material, lower our foot, make sure all of our packets or pockets are flat, and sew across. Got a little bit of bulk here, so we're going to roll that up. And again, this is uh, where you won't see it, so it's not as important. Okay, we're coming up on the end here, and we're just going to come up, turn the corner, and do some reversing. A little bit too far there, but it's okay because this is just the tacking area. Turn. So down here, tiny bit of reversing. Again, this is not coming off anyway, so. Okay, and there you have it. In this chapter, we'll be sewing our zipper plaque. So this is panel number one, and we're gonna take the pins out, and this is our zipper plaque. So we're gonna fold it in half and mark the center. Pull the other side in half. Mark the center over here as well. And then we'll take our clear acrylic ruler, put it on top, and strike a line all the way across. And then we'll cut it in half, right down that line. So now we have our zipper that comes in the kit and we're going to move both of the sliders off to the side and we're going to put basting tape right up next to the edge down both sides of the zipper. And it's, the zipper's a little big so you don't really need the whole zipper. That's why I'm not going all the way to the end over here. Remove the transfer paper. Building the glue. Uh, remove the transfer paper, but only do it on one side of the zipper. If you do it on both, it's just a pain in the butt because it'll get stuck to it. 
And then we're going to take the outside surface, which is the surface that doesn't have the urethane coating, and we're going to baste it face down on top of the zipper, aligning the edges. Okay, and then we'll take our basting tape again and run it down right on top of our Cordura that we just basted down to the end. Move the transfer paper and we'll fold the zipper over so that it's about a quarter inch away from the zipper teeth. So we'll take the uh, other side, outside surface facing down. We'll line up these outside edges and paste it down so that they're even, almost even here at the end. It's okay if they're a tiny bit off, but you need them to be really close. And then we'll just base down the length. Take our basting tape, apply it to this edge again, all the way down the length of the Cordura fabric, peel off the transfer paper, and repeat the process of basting the zipper down about a quarter inch from the teeth. We're going to turn our worker bee down to half speed. I prefer to sew my zipper at half, just since everyone's going to see this stitch. And then we're going to line the outside of this foot up right up against the teeth. And our foot, our needle is in the center position. Okay, we'll do a little reversing here even though we're gonna sew in that outside edge and it really doesn't matter. And then just sew down the whole length of the zipper and do some reversing at the end. And then we'll repeat the same process on this side of the zipper, doing a little reversing at the beginning and then just sewing down the length of the zipper. Okay, our zipper is complete, so we're going to pull our sliders into the center of the zipper plaque. We're going to take a pair of scissors. We prefer to use an older pair or a pair that's not as nice to cut the zipper since it can damage the scissors over time and cut off both ends of the zipper. In this chapter, we'll be sewing our zipper plaque. Okay, so we're going to run double-sided tape across one end of the zipper plaque. Remove the transfer paper, oops. remove the transfer paper. And then we want to take our ends and stick the outside surfaces together facing one another, lined up at the edges and the corners. And if it's off by a little bit, it won't be a huge deal. See, there's just that little corner right there we can actually trim that off or we can just sew with our half inch and it's, it's still gonna be okay. So now we're gonna sew this at a half inch at the machine. We're gonna use our magnetic sewing guide and place it on the half inch mark on our uh, needle plate. And then we're gonna sew from one to the other. And we're gonna do a top stitch as well. So when I come up to the zipper, I'm going to walk right next to it, and then I like to actually walk it by hand over the zipper, just so I don't have any collisions, and I can actually, I'm actually pushing it a little bit, because if you don't push it, it doesn't like to go over it. So I've walked over once, and then I'm going to walk over once in reverse too, just to make sure it's held in place well. And then we'll just finish sewing to the end and help it through again. There we go. And you'll notice that we're not sewing through this pocket underneath. 
we're making sure we avoid it. Okay, and now we're going to sew a top stitch on here. So I'm going to roll this up. And I'll move my uh, magnetic guide back onto the sewing machine. And then I'll splay this open. Line up the outside foot uh, with the edge of my fold, which is a quarter inch from the needle. And I'll sew down this. And we're going over the zipper again. So I'm going to go walk it by hand over those two stitches. That way I just don't break anything and keep going. Now we're just going to uh, put a tacking stitch in this pocket. So we're just going to, we already have basting tape on it. So we're just going to baste it down to the edge of the fabric on both sides. And then we'll just sew a tacking, st tacking stitch a quarter inch from the edge. We already, we've already sewn it a little bit, if you remember earlier, just to make it easier for us. We'll do some reversing at the end. And then we're going to sew the other side down in the exact same manner. So we'll flip it around and just sew from the top of the pocket down to our previous stitches. Now that that side's sewn down, we're going to put basting tape on the other end of the zipper right here. And remember, we want outside surfaces to face one another. So we'll peel off our transfer paper, revealing the glue. And this one's a little more awkward because you have to flip this up and flip this down like so and line up the edges. We're going to reduce some reversing here at the beginning and then sew up to the zipper teeth and when we get there I'm going to sew up and stop just a little short and then I'm going to walk it over by hand because if the needle hits the teeth we could have a deflection or a break and it just doesn't like to walk over the walk over the zipper as it is anyway. So it's a lot easier to do by hand. And I'm going to walk over it once in reverse as well, just to make sure it's locked in place. And again, we have to go back forward. And then we just finish sewing all the way down to the end and do some reversing. I removed the magnetic sewing guide and I move, I'm going to move my needle to the right position so that I can sew as clo sew closer to this edge. And then I lined up the outside of the foot with the edge of the uh, fold. And I'm going to sew down, the, sew down this over the zipper. So I basically made a tunnel with my material and now we're just going to sew down this, putting a top stitch right over the zipper. Do a little bit of reversing at the beginning and then just sew down the length. I'll, once again, when I get close to the zipper, I'll either go really, really slow. See, it doesn't want to go over, so now I'm going to just walk it over the zipper. And I won't, I won't walk back over the zipper because I want this to be one single stitch since it's a top stitch. And do a little reversing at the end. So now we're going to baste our pocket down just like we did on the other side and sew a tacking stitch on it just to make it easier to sew the whole bag together in our next step. Oh, we'll want to move the needle back to the center position. This one's a little harder to sew since you're contending with the bag that's already sewn together, but as long as you pay attention and make sure you're sewing it with the edges lined up, you should be okay.
And we'll do the same thing on the other side of this pocket. But now we're going to sew the whole bag together and we want to make sure that outside surfaces are facing one another. So I'm going to fold this up. And as you can see, I can. this is the inside of the bag. And I'm going to line up this bottom edge right here where my wax canvas is, making sure these corners are aligned. And then I'm going to create a fold like so. Okay. And I'm going to want to put my magnetic sewing guide at the half inch mark on the needle plate. And then we'll put it under there and we'll start sewing. And we want to be very careful to line it up at a half inch seam allowance around the perimeter or else we can actually get out of sync and have extra fabric at the opposite corner. So we'll sew up, sew a few inches, bury our needle, stop, adjust our fabric. So that we're lined up perfectly. Continue to sew. Okay. Now we're getting close to this corner, so we're going to bury our needle. So we're cutting slits in the zipper plaque, which is currently on top, and we don't want to go any deeper than uh, a half inch, so we're stopping before that point. Okay. And then we'll line up these edges. Now you're going to want to sew slowly around this area because if you sew quickly, and you miss your half inch seam allowance, it can cause you trouble later. So I'm going to bury my needle, adjust my material, sew one stitch, try to get that wrinkle out of there real fast. So I'll pull this back like this. There we go. Put it down. Sew a half inch. Oops. I think, did I put a wrinkle in there? Can't do that without. No, okay. Put it back down. Line up the fabric. Make sure I'm at my half inch over here. And at this point, I'm going to want to move my webbing out of the way because I don't want to sew through the webbing. That'd be a big no no. So one more stitch. And now we're basically back to a straightaway. Just a little bit of curve in here. Bury my needle. Let me just move the fabric so you can see better. Line up the edges, and we'll just keep sewing at a half inch. Okay, we're getting close to where we stop. Another four inches. Okay, we're right up close to this next corner, so again, we're gonna put some slits in our zipper plaque so that we can easily take this corner. At our half inch mark, bury our needle. We're gonna lift our foot here, rotate our fabric a little bit. Make sure we push this wrinkle out so we don't actually get a wrinkle in the material. Bury our needle, and we're pretty much ready to turn and go down the side of the bag. And we want to make sure everything's lined up down here, and then I'm also going to check my bottom corner. So I like to line up the wax canvas down here so that they're perfectly even, pinch the bottom of the material, and then pull a little bit to stretch it. and then do some reversing down here at this bottom corner. And then one bag side of the bag is sewn. And you can see we're at a half inch all the way around. It's good. Now we'll sew the other side and then we'll turn it right side out. See what it looks like. So let's get started on that. So I'm pinching the corners down, 
making sure my wax canvas is lined up, getting everything nice and straight before I put it under the foot of the sewing machine. And then I'll, I'll, I always check it one more time before I start sewing it. The bag's getting in the way a little bit there. And we're ready to start. And I actually think it's easier if you undo the zipper here, just because you have a little bit more flexibility in the top of the bag. So I undo the zipper, check to make sure it's all lined up, make sure we're at a half inch, do some reversing here at the beginning. Sew up, making sure it's straight. You know, just a few inches at a time. Straighten the material. Few more inches. The process for sewing this side is the exact same as it was on the other side, so we won't show all of this. In this chapter, we're going to be sewing grow grain to finish up the inside of our bag. Now we have our grow grain webbing, but it's really a ribbon. Uh, we're going to put basting tape down both sides of the grow grain, all the way down the length. Don't have to be perfectly accurate, but you want to make sure that you're closer to the outside than you are the inside of the center of it. Same thing on the other side, pretty close to the edge. So we're going to peel off the transfer paper on our grow grain webbing slash ribbon. And we are going to evenly baste it on our seam allowance on the inside of the bag. And this will give us a nice finished look. So if you see, I'm trying to base it as evenly as possible between the two sides. If, uh, if you don't feel like it's even, you can peel it up and baste it again. And I'm going to do this all the way over to this corner and then do the other uh, seam allowance as well. The corners can be a little bit tricky, so take your time with them. You just want to make sure you get the fabric pushed all the way up inside the ribbon so you can avoid having empty voids. If you feel like your corners are just a little bit too rounded and there's too much fabric there for your rib or your grow grain, you can actually trim them a little bit just so it looks a little bit more even. And this can also help with uh, making it a little easier at the corners because they are a little bit more difficult. And then we'll just trim it off here at the end. I like to leave a tiny bit extra and then fold it over. So I'll just leave a little bit extra and then I'll actually just fold it over so I can, I can actually sew right into this. I won't need all of this because obviously I can restrict the movement of the bag. But I'll, fold, I'll sew one stitch into it. And now we'll do the same thing over here on our other seam allowance. I'm just gonna sew in the center of this all the way around the bag doing a little reversing here at the beginning, and then just keep it in the center of the uh, grow grain. So all the way around the perimeter. I'll slow down a little bit here at the corner just to make it a little easier. Move the bag around, a little off there. Not too bad. Corners are uh, can be a little tight sometimes, but otherwise it's pretty easy. So here's what our ribbon looks like all the way around the seam allowance. And now we're gonna turn it right side out. This is not a terrible process like most things. It's actually pretty easy. Push out our corners. And our bag is now complete. We zip it up. Got all our nice pockets all the way around the perimeter. Pockets inside. 
Nice finish look. Our utility bag is now complete. Next, you'll see a list of the tools we use to complete this project. All of the materials needed to complete this project are provided in the kit. We have provided a materials list with the amount of material required in case you want to make a second bag using your pattern. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or email. We're glad to help. From all of us here at Sailrite, I'm Seth Grant. Thanks for watching.